Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about the future of medicine. And uh, the next big break in medicine is going to come from something that we call precision medicine. And this is and the spirit behind precision medicine is that each patient has to get a tailor-made treatment and diagnostic techniques have, have to take into account your background, your lifestyle, and hopefully how you react to, to treatment. Now, this is a big target to aim at, but the main problem right now is that there is no clear road on how to get to this precision medicine. So today I'm going to talk to you about how here at the Multiscale Cardiovascular Engineering Group at UCO, which road we're taking to get to precision medicine. And what we're doing is we're using a three-way approach, uh, which combines clinical data and computer models and experimental platforms that allows us to generate frameworks that shift between patient and patient and give clinicians tools that they can use to, to, to achieve that target of precision medicine. Now, I'm going to show you two examples of what we do uh, to, uh, with this framework. And first, I would like to talk about the heart. And we, wor we work with these partners in the, in the Netherlands, and we do an experiment called PhysioHeart, which allows us to see a pig heart outside of the body, as if it were beating in the body. Now, I'm going to show the experiment. If you're impressionable, please look away a couple seconds. Uh, the experiment looks a bit like this. And it's an amazing experiment because you can actually see the heart working under disease and under health, and then you can compare the different things. But it's not very good to design diagnostic techniques because ideally I don't have to take your heart out of your body to see if your heart is wrong. So <laughs> hopefully we can do some diagnostic method like this so I can be in my workstation and a device can be measuring some signals from my body and uh, analyzing those signals to say if I am at high risk of suffering from a heart attack, again without having to take my heart out of my body. Now the device that takes those signals already exists and it is right here fits in my pocket and uh, I can put it in my phone, I can put it anywhere. So acquiring those signals is no longer a problem, we can do it. The real issue is how do we process these signals to get relevant information? And here at UCL we're, we're doing this using artificial intelligence, AI. And this is a tricky bit because as you, as you may have heard, AI requires a lot of data and there is simply not enough clinical data to train AI algorithms. So what, here's where our framework comes in and comes in very handy because we take all the clinical data that we can get and then we develop uh, computer models that can simulate different patients and using the clinical data and those models we can simulate all the data that we do not have and train our AIs. Then once the AIs are done we go back to our GORE platform back here and we can test the AI and we can see that it actually works before giving it to the clinicians so they can detect heart diseases without having to take your heart out of your body. And that is how one of the ways that we're doing precision medicine. Now the second does not concern the heart, but it concerns your blood vessels. And the blood vessels are very tricky because they change, they vary quite a bit between patient and patient. So what we do here is we take CT images, and a CT is a 3D X-ray, and we get all these complex images of what is in your heart, and using specialized software, we can segment the vessel that we're interested in. For example, this is the aorta, which is the biggest vessel in your body. Then with that geometry and some computer models, we can simulate how the blood flows inside the aorta. Now, we can do this for the aorta, but we can also do it for the femoral artery, for example, which is only a couple millimeters thick. And this give us, gives us a degree of detail that is impossible uh, to achieve in clinical practice. So we can then give clinicians these tools and they can assess how well you're doing, or if you're not doing so well, just by using some CT images and you don't have to be cut open. Now another interesting thing that we can do with these geometries is 3D print them, for example. And we have a platform that can simulate all the fluid components in your body, including the heart, with data collected from the patient. So we have a piston that gathers data from the patient and simulates how the heart beats. We can then connect our 3D printed aorta to the rest of the body and simulate different conditions and see how treatment would act on that specific vessel and see any parameter that we want, any fluid parameter that we want on this patient-specific geometry. So using this framework, we can give clinician tools, that will, tools and data that would be impossible to achieve in clinical practice. And that is also a way in which we are achieving precision medicine. Now, the main takeaway message is that this is what the future of medicine looked like uh, some years ago. So handheld devices that could uh, diagnose you. And uh, 
operating theaters that could show everything that was in the body without having to open up the patient. But the truth is that we already have those operating theaters and we have handheld ultrasounds and my smartwatch has been monitoring my heart rate 24-7 without having to cut me open. So that future that we thought of before is already here. What we really have to ask is how are we going to use all these devices to go towards precision medicine? Thanks everyone who's involved in this research and thank you very much.